uh, I'll start with just giving you guys a little background of how I sort of got into involved with the Palestinian uh, issue and got into the politics of it. Um, my grandparents were, uh, my, my family in general uh, was born, was uh, from Safat. Well, Safat's in the uh, north of uh, Palestine, and uh, in 1948 uh, they were forced out um, by uh, Israeli militias and uh, were never allowed back into their homes. Uh, it's uh, up here in uh, what is uh, present-day Israel. Um, and uh, from there, most of the people in the north of Palestine went either to uh, Syria or into Lebanon um, as refugees. And uh, we, I, I was born in uh, Damascus. I lived there until I was about six years old. I came out here to the United States, and uh, while I was pretty connected to, the, to my Palestinian culture, I, I spoke Arabic, ate all the dishes, uh, you know, was, was pretty involved with the traditions. Um, I was never politically involved, and I was um, pretty assimilated into American culture and, you know, happy being an American. Uh, that all sort of changed uh, after September 11th. Obviously, uh, there was a lot of racism first towards Arabs and then towards the Muslim community um, at large. And uh, at that point, I started to, I had a really good job. <laughs> I graduated high school. I was like, I don't want to go to college. I'm, you know, making money. Um, but w with the racism and just me starting a question, you know, wh why is there this conflict between uh, people in the Middle East and the United States? I uh, went back to school. I started to study uh, the Middle East. Um, I started to... Uh, and, and sort of all the studying, um, this investigation led me back to who I, you know, to my own culture, to my own history as a Palestinian. Um, because anybody that I would ask, everything that I would read, the number one thing that people say in the Middle East that, that uh, angers them the most about American policy is uh, our, our policy towards Israel our continued support of a country uh, whose laws are racist, uh, who oppresses a people. And it's really the, the most, for, for people in the Middle East, one of the biggest ways, uh, one, of the, one of the ways that they see the contradiction of our policy throughout the world most clearly. Um, so, you know, I was led back to that. And w what I sort of found w with, you know, all the studying I did and uh, also with my visits there sort of just culminated and last year I went for, uh, me and my fiance went for a full three months to the Middle East. A month of that was spent in the West Bank volunteering, um, doing nonviolent resistance against the building of the uh, apartheid wall in the West Bank. Um, and the summer before that I'd, I'd done a, a volunteer done volunteer work uh, with Bears State University there. I've also, uh, we also went into Israel um, through Tel Aviv, up into Haifa, and, and visited with all of Israeli uh, activists that, that are opposed to the occupation. But essentially what, what we have, and to sort of understand what it is that we're supporting in the United States, it, it's not very clear because the media doesn't give us uh, the proper information. Um, even uh, the universities, the discourse in the universities is very limited. Um, and certainly our government isn't giving us the proper information. But what we have is a three-tier system in uh, in uh, the occupied Palestinian territories in the West Bank, Gaza, and then also in Israel of essentially racism and uh, oppression. The first tier is against uh, Palestinian Israelis. These are citizens of uh, the, the Palestinians who didn't flee, who weren't forced out in 1948, and who are now citizens of Israel. And uh, if you guys take a look at this map here, essentially that includes anybody in the blue area here. Any Palestinian um, of Arab descent who lives in the blue area has uh, Israeli citizenship. <coughs> now, um, Israeli citizenship for Palestinians is not the same as for Israeli citizenship for uh, Jews, um, for, for the Jewish citizens of uh, Israel. Um, first off, the, uh, there's a law called the Citizenship and Entry Law into Israel, which essentially uh, allows any person of Jewish heritage, whether you're Jewish, your grandparents are Jewish, or if you uh, marry uh, a, a Jewish person anywhere in the world to be able to go back and live in Israel and gain citizenship. Um, by contrast, you look at the Palestinians who have Israeli citizenship. They are not even allowed, if, if they do marry somebody within the West Bank who's Palestinian, um, they're not even allowed to bring that Palestinian back 
and give them citizenship and have them live with them. So they're not they're not bring the, bring their spouses back with them. In addition, the, their children, if they have children together, um, those children aren't allowed to live aren't allowed to live with them. They they're allowed to stay in Israel until the age of twelve, and then at that point they have to leave. So um, that's that's one aspect that they live as second class citizens. Uh, the second aspect is uh, in per capita income. Um, this is sort of done the same way that uh, blacks here in the United States are discriminated against uh, through institutionalized racism, through gentrification, um, and essentially Palestinians that live in Israel make about 70% uh, less um, than um, Jewish Israelis. And uh, part of, a large part of that is housing discrimination. Um, the uh, laws uh, in Israel, unlike the United States, the majority of land is owned by uh, the, the government, by the Israeli state. So about 92% of the land is owned by the Israeli state. And uh, essentially they lease land to their citizens to, you know, to, to use. And uh, the way that that land is leased is uh, the, the Jewish National Fund, which is an organization that's associated with the World Zionist uh, Organization, is the one that manages the uh, Israeli uh, land leasing. And stated on their website, and this is a stated policy, is essentially that they won't sell or lease land to non-Jewish uh, residents of Israel. So what, in essence, what ends up happening is you have Palestinians who live in Nazareth, who live in Haifa, who can't even have natural population growth. So if they have natural population growth, they can't purchase more land, they can't lease more land to, to have that develop. Um, and, and the rights are getting even worse for them. Um, just recently, the, uh, uh, during the war, uh, uh, the, the last assault on Gaza, uh, Palestinian uh, political parties were banned um, in Israel. So they can't, for, they, they can't have their own political parties. And uh, the politicians, the politicians uh, that won the Israeli election, election that have formed a new coalition, uh, one of them is Avgor Lieberman, who is a right-wing um, extremist, nationalist, fascist, whatever you want to call it, who um, advocates the expulsion of the Palestinian population from Israel. These are citizens of the Israeli state who, by now mainstream politicians that are, form, form the main governing coalition in Israel, are saying that they want to expel their Palestinian citizens. So that's, that's the first tier of racism, and that is for the Palestinian citizens of Israel. The second tier is in the West Bank and in Gaza, or I'm sorry, in the West Bank. Uh, the West Bank was occupied in 1967, uh, right here, um, and uh, ha has been under military occupation ever since then. Essentially, the people, uh, the Palestinians living, living in the West Bank, don't have any citizenship or rights. Um, now, a lot of people believe that they have citizenship or they, they're citizens of the Palestinian Authority that was formed after the Oslo Accords. Um, that's just not true. The Palestinian National Authority uh, doesn't, doesn't have any sovereignty. They can't, essentially, they don't have control of the, their territory. They don't have air rights. They don't have uh, control of the resources in the West Bank. And they're at the whim of the Israeli military. The Israeli military regularly goes into Palestinian towns in the West Bank has incursions, um, enforces curfews. So, and um, that leaves the Palestinian people in the West Bank essentially with no rights at all and, and no legal structure that governs, uh, <coughs> that governs them. Um, in addition, the Palestinian Authority um, is dependent on foreign aid. A lot of that aid um, comes from the United States or uh, Europe. So anytime Europe or the United States who are, especially the U.S., is staunchly pro-Israel, Anytime they don't like a specific policy of the Palestinian Authority, they'll cut off funding. Um, or, for instance, as we just saw uh, in, uh, when, you know, when the Palestinian people elected Hamas, uh, as you know, when Hamas won the elections, we cut off aid from from uh, the Palestinian Authority. Um, so we have essential control of that 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 government.